Which founder was a leader to prevent Benjamin Franklin from going to London during the Stamp Act crisis? Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Today's founder is a man named William Bradford. Now William Bradford came from a publishing family in Philadelphia and he was apprenticed to his own family and learned the trade. Another apprentice at the same family's firm was Benjamin Franklin. And the two men became associates, but ended up going on to have the two most successful print shops in Philadelphia and were each other's competition. Again, they were always seemed to be friendly. In fact, it seemed like Benjamin Franklin actually loaned money to William Bradford at one point. But as the stamp back crisis arose, their friendship diverted. Uh, in fact, they became fairly bitter rivals. So Benjamin Franklin was nominated by the state of Pennsylvania, or I should say the colony of Pennsylvania, to go to London and speak on the represent them to the crown. However, many people didn't want Franklin to go, and in fact, William Bradford published an article in his newspaper, which was probably written by John Dickinson, but he published an article in his newspaper that essentially said, no, 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 Benjamin Franklin is the worst choice for this. And there were two main reasons they didn't want Benjamin Franklin to be Pennsylvania's representative to the crown. First of all, he had a little bit of a tendency to make some enemies in England, which happens. <laughs> um, uh, and he also, more importantly, there were suspicions that Benjamin Franklin was one of the people who helped craft the Stamp Act in the first place. Now, this is not true. We know this is not true. I mean, in hindsight, the British government had no interest in letting colonists have any say in their taxes, as would come back to haunt them shortly. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, they were just nervous that Franklin's time there was, was just creating more trouble for the colonies than it was fixing. So, didn't work. Franklin was chosen and did go over to London for a few, a several years up until the American Revolution broke out. And during that time, William Bradford opened the London Coffee House. Now, don't be mistaken. Don't let the name fool you. It was in Philadelphia. They just called it the London Coffee House because that was sexy at the time. This became a frequent haunt of many of the early founders. And in fact, when people came for the First Continental Congress, many of them came and ate and dined at the London Coffee House owned by William Bradford. And furthermore, once the First Con Continental Congress was called into session, it was William Bradford's print shop, not Benjamin Franklin's, William Bradford's print shop that was chosen to do the official publications of the First Continental Congress, which included the letters they sent to Parliament and the King, as well as the Continental Association was initially published by William Bradford. Now, shortly thereafter, when the war breaks out, Bradford leaves the publishing company in the hands of his son and joins the, the Pennsylvania militia. And he goes out and he serves. He serves in the New Jersey campaign as an officer, and he's actually wounded during the Battle of Trenton. Now, fortunately, he was okay, but he was put in charge of uh, the, the battle, uh, the Fort Billingsport, which was on the Delaware River. And the British had come, and they had conquered Philadelphia, and they were doing skirmishes out and about around Philadelphia uh, at the time when Fort Billingsport was attacked. Now, realizing that he was vastly outnumbered and probably would have his men slaughtered if he put up a fight, uh, uh, William Bradford did order a retreat. On his way out, he destroyed the cannons, and he burned the fort to the ground. Doesn't seem great destroying a fort, but we can't give it to the British now, can we? So, Bradford was still recovering from his wounds, so he ended up resigning then, because he was 60 years old at this point. So he ended up resigning and going back home uh, to retire. Now, that is the life of William Bradford, uh, one of Ben Franklin's greatest lifetime rivals. I hope you enjoyed this video. I recommend you check out a little bit more about him. I left a, my article I wrote in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. It helps out a lot. And if you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos five days a week. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with another founder on Monday.